Welcome, friends, to Ted Russ Ministries for August 11th, 2024. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Bless us, O God, with a reverent sense of your loving presence, that we may be at peace and worship you now with all our mind and spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Bible reading, friends, is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 to chapter 5, verse 2. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here ends the reading. Our first song is called Breathe. Thank you. 
Most of the 300 residents of Whittier, Alaska live in one big apartment complex, and that's why Whittier is sometimes called a town under one roof. One former resident of that community said, I didn't have to step outside the building, the grocery store, the Notary Public, the school, the post office, all other basic services were on the ground floor, just an elevator ride away. Because life was so comfortable, I often wanted to keep to myself, thinking I didn't need anyone, he said. But the residents are so warm and friendly, they look out for each other. I learned that they needed me, and I needed them. Like the residents of Whittier, Alaska, we may at times want to keep to ourselves and avoid community. Avoiding community seems less stressful, but the Bible teaches us that as followers of Jesus, we should have a healthy balance of solitude and time spent in fellowship with other Christians. Paul compares the church to a human body. Paul says in Romans 12, 5, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually we are members one of another. Just as each body part has a distinct function, every believer has a distinct and important role in life. Just as a body part can exist alone, a believer can't live the life of faith in isolation. It's in the midst of community that we use our gifts and our abilities and grow to be like Jesus Christ. Our second reading from Ephesians 4 and 5 makes this same point. Ephesians 4, 25 to 5, 2 says, Christians are really called to be imitators of God. This does not mean we Christians are perfect. Rather, the Holy Spirit is at work in your life and mine, so our actions and our attitudes genuinely reflect love and forgiveness that we have received through our Lord Jesus Christ and his life, death, and resurrection. I believe one of the keys to becoming an imitator of God, first of all, is to handle our anger in a healthy way. Ephesians 4, 26-27 says, Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not make room for the devil. Notice here that the Bible does not say that we shouldn't feel angry, but it points out that it is important to handle our anger in a healthy way. If our anger is vented carelessly and thoughtlessly, our anger could hurt others and destroy precious relationships. If bottled up inside, anger can cause us to become bitter and destroy us from within. So Ephesians teaches us to deal with our anger immediately in a way that builds relationships rather than destroys them. If we nurse our anger, we give Satan and the powers of evil an opportunity to divide us. So, right now, as you're listening to this program, are you angry with someone? Perhaps you're angry with the church or even God himself. So what could you do to resolve your differences? Anger is a dangerous thing at times. Ephesians says, don't let the day end before you and I begin to work on mending our relationships. This is how we imitate God's love and imitate God's ways. In Ephesians 4, 
20 to 32, we are told that we could bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit by the way we live, if we live foolishly and recklessly and sin against others in a consistent way. Paul warns us against such things as unwholesome language. We hear a lot of that these days, especially in TV and radio. Paul warns us against bitterness, the improper use of anger. He warns us against harsh words. He warns us against slandering others. And he warns us about a bad, having a bad attitude. Instead of acting this way, Ephesians says we should be forgiven, just as God has forgiven us in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Are we bringing sorrow or pleasing the Lord with our attitudes and our actions? Ephesians again calls us to act in love toward your sisters and brothers in Christ, just as God acted in love and sending, <coughs> sending his son Jesus to die for our sins and open the way to eternal life and salvation. I especially love Ephesians 4, 32 and 5, 1 and 2, which say, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us. You remember what we pray so often in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Ephesians says that just as children imitate their parents, we are called to follow and imitate God's example. God's great love for us led him to sacrifice himself so we might live forever in the beauty and glory of heaven. Our love for others should be of the same kind, a love that goes beyond affection to self-sacrificing service. As imitators of God, then, we have spiritual movements that are important. As imitators of God, we move from falsehood to truth. We move from anger to forgiveness. We move from evil and filthy talk to talking in a positive way and talking in a way that's only useful for building up people and building up Christ's church. We move from bitterness to kindness. We move from judgment to grace. Here in 2024, we could choose to imitate our wonderful parents, maybe faithful grandparents. We could imitate a favorite teacher we had in high school or grade school. We could imitate a sports hero, perhaps, or an actor or musician, or someone else. But Ephesians 5.1 encourages you and me to be imitators of God. I believe this is the best way to live, and this is the good news today, my precious friend. Amen. Our next song is Abide With Me. I hope you will sing it with me.
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing song today is Surrender.
friend for faithfully supporting this ministry. Special thanks to my son Andrew, who helps me put it online each week. Thanks to St. Mark's Lutheran Church, Claremont, North Carolina, near Hickory, for allowing me to tape it here, the church I'm serving right now as an interim pastor. I've been here 11 months. Special words of greetings to some of my faithful listeners. Dave and Peg Brown, special prayers asking for Dave if he battles cancer. Also remember Pamela Weber, my faithful listeners, Jim and Shirley Hasselbach, Terry and Deb Widmer, Ann and Beth Windish, Pastor Joe Bartzak, very faithful listener, Chris Gundy, Daniel Rust, Andy Rust, prayers for Ken Eisenhower of St. Mark's recovering from a bad fall last weekend. I hope you'll contact me if you have a special hymn request or a prayer request. I do read the emails and the text. Go in peace now. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.